Good evening to all the senior members and my junior students and members. Uh, today we have very good symposium on customer pennies and many Hello. eminent speakers are waiting to deliver their lectures. And as we know, the customer pennies is not very commonly seen nowadays in our opinions. When we were students, we got it very frequently, but nowadays, uh, probably it is going to the oncologists and also general surgeons as well as the... And also, I think, because of the environmental factors, because of the good sanitation, and the habit decreased in uh, incidence. So, we need to know the proper management of these cases, diagnosis of these cases, as well as the to focus on the controversies. There are many controversies regarding the treatment, regarding the investigation, regarding the uh, your surgical procedures, minimally invasive procedures, chemotherapy procedures, radiotherapy, all has been changed. So uh, we are waiting from our speakers to be enlightened regarding this management of this uh, comparatively rare disease. Thank you very much. I invite our secretary, Dr. Sunil Mal. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so this is our first symposium on behalf of BUS. Uh, it is a symposium on CA penis. Uh, we are going to conduct every month some symposium. And our speakers will be uh, some juniors and some seniors, and maybe from some other, uh, other uh, specialty also. So uh, this symposium is very uh, interesting one in, on CA penis. Uh, I think uh, we can start the program because we have got, got some gathering and I expect that more people will come. Uh, so I invite my, uh, our first speaker, Dr. Nabin Gupta. He is the IOC professor in Department of Urology, uh, in Department of Urology, IPG mayor. Uh, so his topic is surgical anatomy of penis. Dr. Nabin, please. Good evening, everyone. A uh, very warm welcome to this uh, BUS symposium on carcinoma penis. And uh, I've been asked to speak on the surgical anatomy of the penis. So coming to the external anatomy, the penis consists of an attached root and a free pendulous body covered by the skin. It is uh, composed of the two corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosa, encased within the tunica, bux fascia, datos fascia, and skin. And it serves both the urinary and sexual functions. The skin of the penis is very mobile as its datos fascia backing is loosely attached to the bux fascia. And it is highly elastic without appendages and fat. In uncircumcised men, the foreskin is the penile skin as it folds over the glands and attaches below the corona. The glans penis skin is immobile as it is attached to the tunica albuginea below it. Coming to the fascias over the penis. The superficial fascia or the datos fascia, it is the continuation of the colis fascia from the perineum and it extends from the base to the prepuce. It is loosely attached to the skin and deeper bux fascia and contains the superficial arteries, arteries, veins and nerves. The deep fascia of the skin is the bux fascia. It is a tough elastic, la uh, tough elastic layer immediately adjacent to the tun tunica albuginea. The cavernosa are surrounded by the bux fascia dorsally and it splits to encompass the corpus spongiosum ventrally. The deep dorsal vein, the dorsal artery, and the dorsal nerves are contained within the bux fascia. And it is distally attached to the glands. The tunica albuginea is a bilayered tough structure which covers the corpora cavernosa. And it has an incomplete septum which divides the two corpora cavernosa. The inner layer is circular. And from there, intercavernosal pillars uh, provide strength uh, and support to the elastic tissue and the outer layer 
is longitudinally oriented and it is absent between the 5 and 7 o'clock positions, which makes that area weak. Coming to the ligaments of the penis, the suspensory ligament arises from the buccal fascia and consists of two lateral bundles and one median bundle, which circumscribe the dorsal vein of the penis. The main function is to attach the tunica albuginea of the corpora cavernosa to the pubis, and it provides support for the mobile portion of the penis. And the fundiform ligament, it arises from the coles fascia and is lateral, superficial, and not adherent to the tunica albuginea of the corpora cavernosa. The corpora are paired cylinders and they are conglomeration of sinusoids. They are separated by smooth muscle cells, connective tissue, collagen, arterioles, venules, and terminal nerves. The proximal ends of the corpora cavernosa from the crura, covered by the ischio cavernosus muscle, and originate at the undersurface of the ischiopubic rami as two separate structures, but merge under the, under the pubic arch distal to the pubic symphysis and remain attached up to the glands. Whereas the corpora spongiosum is, is single and contains the urethra, it extends from the bulb to the glands. The sinusoids are larger, tunica is thinner, lacks the outer layer. The bulb, that is the proximal end of the corpora spongiosum, is fixed to the perineal membrane covered by the bulbospongiosis and it narrows anteriorly to form the corpus spongiosum. Now coming to the arterial supply of the penis. The arterial supply of the penis can be divided into the deep arterial system and the superficial arterial system. The deeper arterial system derives its supply from the internal pudendal, which continues as the common penile artery and divides into three branches, the bulbourethral, the cavernosal, and the dorsal artery. The bulbourethral artery supplies the urethra, the spongiosum, and the glands, the cavernosal artery pro, uh, provides supply to the cavernous sinuses, and the dorsal artery runs below the box fascia and between the dorsal nerves and supplies the glands. It gives circumflex branches which encircle the corpora and provide rich blood supply. The superficial arterial system of the penis is derived from the femoral artery through its superficial external pudendal and the deep external pudendal branches which provide the dorsolateral and the ventrolateral axial arteries. These are the branches, the superficial external pudendal and the deep external pudendal, and they provide the dorsolateral and the ventrolateral branch, the superficial branches to the penile uh, penile skin. Coming to the venous drainage of the penis, there, there are three distinct venous drainage systems, the superficial, intermediate, and deep venous drainage. The superficial drainage system drains the prepuce, the skin, and the subcutaneous tissue, and through the two superficial dorsal veins, drains into the more commonly into the left saphenous vein and sometimes into the right saphenous vein or divides into two. This is the superficial drainage system from the prepuce, skin, and subcutaneous tissue draining into the saphenous. The intermediate drainage system from the glands, the Retrocoronal plexus is formed from the distal corpora, emissary veins, and from the spongiosum, circumflex veins drain into the deep dorsal vein of penis and from there into the prostatic venous plexus. The deep venous drainage of the penis from the proximal corpora, crura, and bulb into the internal pudendal vein. The lymphatic drainage of the penis. From the prepuce and skin of the shaft, they join at the coronal level and drain mostly into the superficial inguinal nodes. The glands and corporeal bodies join at the base of the penis and drain through the superficial inguinal nodes to the deep inguinal nodes and to the pelvic nodes. And the erectile tissue of the penis drains directly into the internal iliac nodes. This is the zonal anatomy of the superficial inguinal nodes as proposed by Dressler. Uh, Dressler proposed uh, superomedial, superolateral, inferomedial, and inferolateral, and the central group. 
according to the veins uh, that are present in the region, the superolateral group uh, around the superficial circumflex iliac, the superomedial group around the superficial epigastric and the superficial external pudendal, the inferolateral along the lateral femoral cutaneous vein, and the inferomedial along the saphenous vein, and the central group around the saphenofemoral junction. And this anatomy of Dressler and his boundaries of the superficial inguinal nodes formed the basis for the su superficial inguinal block dissection. He proposed that the superficial inguinal nodes lie in a zone parallel and one centimeter above the inguinal nodes from a point joining the pubic tubercle to the external superior leg spine and 20, uh, to a vertical line drawn uh, perpendicularly from the anterior superior iliac spine, 20 centimeter in length, and a vertical line 15 centimeter in length from the pubic tubercle, and a line joining these two points. This is the region where the superficial inguinal nodes are present, and this formed the basis of the inguinal block dissection boundaries. Uh, the penile nerve supply, the somatic supply is derived through the pudendal nerves. The sympathetic supply comes from T11 to L2 via the inferior mesenteric and the superfi uh, superficial hypogastric plexus, superior hypogastric plexus through the hypogastric nerves. And the parasympathetic supply comes from S2 to S4 through the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Thank you. Thank you, Nabin. This is an excellent presentation. And uh, I, think, I think many PETs are present here. So you now know that what is the impaired drainage of penis, and it is one of the important questions for final MCH examination also. So now I invite, there is some little change in program. Now I invite Dr. Shandavinder Banerjee, he is the associate, associate professor in HOD of Medical Oncology, Medical College, Calcutta, and he will going to present new adjuvant and adjuvant chemotherapy in CA penis. Dr. Banerjee, please.